you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we're going into r slash entitled people, where people are, guess, huh? Entitled! If you guessed correctly, you have a cookie. Here you go. Now, if you enjoy, like and subscribe and leave a comment with your thoughts down below. Now, let the go. Three strikes and I choose violence. This story happened like 12 or 13 years ago, so it won't be verbatim. Firstly, a bit of backstory. I have, to quote Tony Stark, breathtaking anger management issues. I meditate twice a day in order to control said issues. Whenever I find myself in a confrontation, I will often give whoever I am confronting three warnings before I let the rage monster loose. It was the case in this story. Here's the cast. Drunken jackass. Kind of self-explanatory. Male in his late mid-late twenties, typically overweight, entitled frat boy. TK, my friend. Female, 23, one of my best friends. Was dealing with a bad breakup. The bartender, a great girl. The bar at owner, one awesome dude. DJ friends. Three guys who seriously should have tried to get their friend to back off. PO1, police officer one, an obvious veteran cop who was tired of dealing with entitled people. And police officer two, just tired in general. Now, on to the story. TK had just broken up with her girlfriend and was feeling very bummed, so I took her to one of my favorite bars to drink the blues away. DJ and his friends were there when we arrived, and were obviously deep in their cups at this point, and we were being loud, obnoxious, and very rude to every female they saw. About an hour after TK and I got to the bar, DJ finally noticed her as she was coming back from the bathroom. He made a crude comment to her on the way past, and it made TK uncomfortable. Me, being the good friend I am, told the dude to back off and that he was most definitely not her type. He just waved me off and went back to drinking. TK and I went out for a smoke in about 30 minutes later, because smoking in a public building is illegal in our state. As we were coming back in, DJ made another crude comment to TK, along with grabbing his junk. Well, that's warning too. This time, DJ just commented about me sharing the wealth or some BS. TK simply tells him to F off and we return to our seats. Warning number three came after TK's second trip to the bathroom, and now I'm getting really angry. I could feel the rage monster just itching to tear this jackass in half. The bartender had even warned DJ off, which he promptly ignored. Now, here we come to the final straw. As TK and I were returning from another smoke, DJ reached out and grabbed TK's butt, all the while staring me in the eye as if daring me to do something. Now, if he kept to himself, just making lewd and crude comments, the situation might not have gone the way it had, but he had escalated the full-on sexual assault. The rage monster is now unleashed. I lashed out with a right hook that would have made George Foreman proud, right to his temple. DJ was knocked unconscious and DJ's friend sat there in utter shock. DJ came around five minutes later and was clearly angry and embarrassed. He looked over at me and then started complaining to the bartender and the boss. The boss said the greatest thing I've ever heard. Hey, man, OP, I warned you three times to leave TK alone. You also sexually assaulted TK. OP was well within his rights to deck you. Now get the hell out of my bar before I call the cops. It was at that time DJ's friends finally got their heads out of their butts and dragged DJ out of the bar. Now, this is where you would probably think most stories like this would end, right? <laughs> Wrong. 
about 20 minutes later, enter police officer 1 and 2 and DJ, wearing a smug smile on his bruised face. Police officer 1 asked me to step outside so that he could get my side of the story, which I gladly gave him. Police officer 2 talked to TK, bartender, and BO, as well as checking the CCTV. After verifying everyone's stories, I was given a warning to control my temper, and DJ was arrested for sexual assault, disturbing the peace, and public intoxication. Moral of the story, play dumbass games, win dumbass prizes. Also, be careful who you piss off, because you never know who has rage issues. Good job, OP. You're done good. Now, on to the next story. You watch anime, so babysit my peeping Tom Kid. The Bad Neighbor Chronicles. This happened a few years ago, but to this day, Hubby and I still share the stories of the two terrible women that haunted the complex, where we rented our first real apartment. This is a story from the Tish saga. We met our upstairs neighbor, a mother whom we'll call Tish, and her 12-year-old son who we'll call Jay. The very next day we moved in, it was raining. It was odd to find the pair standing at the foot of the staircase that led up to their apartment, which was directly above ours. Tish told us that Jay wanted to ask us a question. Jay pointed to the clothes basket in Hubby's hands, which held our PlayStation and Switch. He told us in the sweetest, most polite voice that he'd been watching us unload our truck and he had seen the consoles, and he asked if he could borrow one of them. Hubby was still, and is, understandably super protective of his things, and even if my Switch wasn't brand spanking new at the time, there was no way I was going to loan a stranger of any age a $400 console, so we gently declined, and Tish quickly scolded Jay as if she hadn't known what he had intended to ask us. But Jay didn't seem faced by the rejection. Instead, he smiled sweetly and told us he'd run upstairs to get something to trade us for a console. Tish, apparently oblivious to her fury from just seconds before, smiled like this was a great idea. But because it was raining, Jay slipped on the stairs to their apartment and grazed his leg. What proceeded was only what can be best described as a monolith shattering screams of the elder blood. Hubby nearly dropped the clothes basket in his rush to help the kid, but Tish pushed Hubby aside, grabbed Jay by the arm, and dragged him upstairs, shouting at Jay for being so rude. Hubby and I were speechless, but neither of us would say what we really thought. Go get that deposit back from the landlord now. Anyway, Jay didn't bug us about borrowing a console again. But over the next few weeks, we noticed he was always hanging around outside our apartment. When we got home from work, he'd be sitting on our porch or in our lounge chairs. Sometimes he'd be playing in the grassy area that was technically our lawn, since we do have to care for it. One day when we came home, we caught him peeking through our kitchen window. When Cubby confronted Jay, Jay smiled sweetly and said that he just wanted to know where the delicious aromas came from. Tish never cooked, so we liked the smell of our apartment. Frick, right in the coke row. It was hard to be stern with Jay. He was obviously invading our privacy, but he was also so sweet and well-mannered. It was actually a wonder he was issued from Tish's womb. Over the weeks, she'd proven to be quite selfish and negligent. Half the time, Jay was playing in the art grass because she wasn't home and had told him to go play outside, so he didn't mess up the apartment. But was al- that was always during the day. However, our property was secure. Would I do what Tish did? Never. But since Jay was 12 years old, and the neighbors were all very trustworthy, we didn't call social services. 
late, late one night, Hubby and I were getting cozy in our living room. Real cozy. We were watching a naughty movie. We'd been having some wine and a nibble of a special cookie. We knew that even though we had blackout curtains, we were running the risk of being heard by the neighbors on either side and above, so we kept things quiet. Once we were done, Hubby walked over to the kitchen to get a glass of water, completely ignorant of the fact that we had forgotten to close the kitchen blinds. When he jumped, I thought it was because he'd almost exposed his willy-dilly ding-dong to the poor old lady next door or something. But no, Hubby grabbed his pants and rushed back to the window, staring curiously, almost angrily, into the darkness. He'd seen something, he told me. But whatever, or whoever it was, they were gone. We tried not to think anything of it, and we decided that we'd reserve our cozy activities for the bedroom out of respect for our neighbors and to avoid humiliation. Not long after, we began watching Dragon Ball Super. Watching it in the living room was preferable because anime is better enjoyed on a huge television and a great sound system. It was late, around 11 p.m. on a Saturday, and we watched a few episodes, but for some reason that I can't remember, we paused. Hubby asked me if I wanted to watch another episode. Yes! Y'all, I didn't say that. Hubby didn't say that. The answer came from the window right above our heads. Hubby leapt from the soda and threw open the front door. There, sitting as politely as you please on our porch, in a huge lounge chair and a blanket at 11 p.m. on a Saturday, was Jay. He had pulled one of our lounge chairs up to the window and had been watching TV with us through the crack in the curtain we'd left to catch some breeze. He stared at Hubby happily, happier than Tom Cruise proclaiming his love for Katie Holmes on Oprah. Well, he was until Hubby picked up a rock and threw it at him. Okay, it was creepy for the kid to have peeking into our living room from the window at 11 p.m.? Of course. Was it cool to throw rocks at him? Hubby and I disagreed. Being a teacher, I couldn't rationalize that level of retaliation against a child. No matter if he were a thin man from Charlie's Angels level, creepy. After Jay ran off screaming like Macaw and he, I told Hubby that we had to apologize in the morning. But we had also talked to Tish about Jay's inappropriate behavior. Tish was pretty chill the next morning when we went to see her upstairs. She even laughed when Hubby told her about throwing the rock, which I found super weird. Tish just shook her head and told us that Jay thinks we're the coolest. Maybe, she said, we should just invite Jay in next time. Next time? Wouldn't it be weird? Like, freaking red flag behavior for two grown adults to invite a 12-year-old into their apartment at 11 p.m.? Tish laughed. No! She knows we're not that kind of people. She can tell we love kids. Why would we watch Dragon Ball Super and have video games if we didn't? But we're so mean to Jay. Every day, Tish sends him down to play with us, and we ignore him. It's so cold. How could we let a child run around, knowing he's all alone? Bitch, you're his mother. You leave Jay all alone in the first place. Oh, we're so out of touch. We have no idea what it's like being a single mother. All she wants is a few hours on the weekend to enjoy herself. Jay wouldn't be scaring us if we just let him into our apartment when she goes out with her friends. We have video games and we watch anime. Hubby lost it. He told Tish what he really thought about her and her weird kid. He told Tish to hire a babysitter, or he'd personally call our landlord and report her. 
Tish sucked her teeth and slammed the door in our face. But before she could slam the main door, she told us that, moving forward, we needed to make sure our curtains were closed if we were going to walk around our apartment naked. And then she looked down at Hubby's jewel area and laughed. What the frickerdoodles? I have no words. Oh my god. Why? Anyway, here's the last story for today. We're ending this on a lighter note. My dog is a Karen. Complaints abound. Our old dog is trying to change the rules to mom bringing her a banana treat every morning. So far, mom has resisted the idea with a sing-song chant, Banana, to entice her dog downstairs. I read the story to Ginger last week, and sounding like Mark Twain, she Karen groans. Lies and damn lies. So this week I offered to express her many complaints in her Karen voice. Dad gossips about me from his twisted point of views. His falsehoods cover inaccuracies to outright untruths. However, his unfairness accelerated to a new level in treatment of me, the ever-faithful family protector, comforter, and head of the house. Let me spread the truth regarding his deceiving role in the house. The other day, this tyrant of a man screams uncontrollably at me to get my fat, furry butt out of the kitchen. This is from a man who's one donut shy of playing the stave puffed marshmallow boy. And here I am serving the family for ten years at the same weight when I was a spry young puppy. And he has the nerve to call me fat. During last week's windstorm, the neighbor releases a box to attack us. The box creeps suddenly and incrementally towards our house. At times, it flies high into the air in preparation for a frontal assault against the house. My first response is to let out a warning yelp to caution my family in the house. Then I start my strategic scary howls to keep the hideous instrument of destruction away from our yard. Dad, in his infinite gullibility, comes out and laughs at my protective baying. It's a little box. Why are you carrying on like that? As he grabs my leash and leads me back into the house. He doesn't understand the power of devastation the box of that magnitude has in tearing down our house. As spring brings more sunshine, Mom opens the blinds on the bedroom window. This allows me to survey the neighborhood with an elevated view to spot danger and potential crisis affecting my family. The two shady dogs down the street pretending to play when they're really planning our demise are my main point of concern. Occasionally, when their plans of torture become quite troubling, I will politely remind the people of my house of their threat by giving a cultured bark. Dad yells at me to stop and then closes the blinds and maneuvers the lovers to eliminate my sightline to the peril. He has no respect for my position in the house. This is from the point of view of the dog, by the way, people. This story is from the point of view of the dog. And with that high note out of the way, that's the end of today's video. Remember to click the like button, click the subscribe button. If you've already clicked the subscribe button, maybe hit the notification bell so you can hear when my next video is out. And please leave a comment for the algorithm. I will see you all next time.